Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little mini-series I'm putting together, we're learning how to use IMFD for the sake of doing a rendezvous with the ISS. Uh, once again, I want to give a big thanks to Dimitri for showing me how to do this. My IMFD knowledge is very limited, and when I started really learning IMFD back with Orbiter 2010, it wasn't very long after that that I stepped away from Orbiter for a really long time. So my knowledge of IMFD has always been very scant, and, um, and, my, and I, need, I definitely need a refresher on it. So with all that said, let me go ahead and switch camera views here. Let's jump back in and unpause. So in the last video, uh, we went through IMFD and we found this solution. Our intercept time is in 16,520 seconds. Our eject time, the time that we'll actually do the burn, is in 13,740 seconds. When we do the burn, it's gonna cost us 41.5 meters per second of delta V to do the burn, and then our intercept velocity is going to be about 42.57 meters per second for a total cost of 84, about 84 meters per second. So that's pretty good. It took us a while to fiddle around with TINTJ, lock, unlock, TINTJ, lock, unlock. So let's see how long it takes to do this in TransX. And granted, I am a lot more familiar with TransX, but even so, I think you'll see that it's just much faster. Again, I'm not saying TransX is better. I'm just saying that for this particular task, uh, it can be much quicker. So I'm going to switch the ships, put in my, my ISS. And I don't like that view, so I'm going to go to graph projection and change it to plan, or focus rather. And we're going to go to maneuver mode, turn on maneuver mode so we can create our hypothetical situation. And we're going, we know that we're going to have to raise one side of our orbit, so we're going to need some prograde. And just eyeballing it, I'm going to put in prograde until, let me see where am I at, until my hypothetical is out to that outer blue line, which represents the orbit of the ISS. So that is about, just give me one second to find that. Uh, that's too much, I've overdone it. So let me just take out some of that prograde. So it's about right there. So with about that much prograde, I can see I've raised the other side of my orbit. But now we'll fine tune it with our date. And again, we're not doing years, months, weeks, we just want minutes and hours so we're going to go backwards to a ultra setting and we're going to go forward in time until our closest approach is as low as it's going to get and since we're already in plane maybe we need more time than that since we're already in plane with the iss we should be able to do this with just prograde and time so just going forward and so now we're at nine so we get down to a finer setting so now we're at 79 meters we're done I mean, yeah, I can fiddle around if I really want to dial in every last little, you know, squeeze of meter. But with time, I'm not really able to improve it much beyond that. Uh, if I go to uh, prograde and go down to a really fine setting, even finer than that, you know, I might be able to just really dial in. But you can see, you know, that's it. That's our solution and we're done. And that took me, what, 40 seconds? Now, and there's one thing also that's worth pointing out. Notice that when we were doing our solution in IMFD, it, uh, it never told us how close we were going to be to the ISS, whereas, you know, TransX gives us this closest approach. We just, we kind of just take it on faith that this maneuver that we set up over here in IMFD will indeed take us to the ISS, and it will, but it would be, um, I, I would like to be able, I wish it had something like the closest approach, but it just doesn't have that. And you can't use them, I was talking to Dimitri about this, apparently uh, you can't really use the map program to tell you how close you're going to be to the ISS either. So, so with this MFD, it doesn't quite work the same way, so we don't have that information over here. And speaking of the way they work, they, they're, almost like, they're almost like opposites. Because you'll, you'll notice with Transex, the way we, the way we put in our plan was by doing our velocities. In this, in this particular case, we only had to work with prograde, but we could also work with outward or we could work with plane change. 
And you'll notice that when we did it in IMFD, we didn't work with any of our velocities. Our velocities are calculated for us. And in fact, I don't even know, you know, DV, is this outward? Is this, is this, is this plane change? I don't know. It doesn't tell you. And the, but the thing is with IMFD, we don't care that the two things we change in IMFD are when will we intercept? What is our time to intercept? And when will we actually perform the burn? When is the eject? So by changing the intercept time and the eject time, IMFD calculates all of those velocities on our behalf. Whereas with Transex, it's almost like the opposite. We, we put in our velocities and, it, and then Transex tells us what our closest approach will be. And, and it's, it's, in, it's up to us to put in the velocities in the correct amounts and in the correct uh, you know, prograde outward and plane change in order to bring down that closest approach. And in this particular case, it seems pretty clear to me that Transex's method is just faster and it's going to be about the same cost. Um, let's see, we have, if we, let me see here. So in maneuver mode, if I look at my, if I look at my prograde, I'm about 46 meters per second on my prograde and then my encounter velocity is about 67. So if I'm being hyper vigilant about dialing down my my velocities as much as I want, I can still do that. I can I can get to this level. You know, here, yeah, we're a little bit more expensive. It's not hugely more expensive, but it is more expensive. But if I really want to work on it and dial down my encounter velocity, I can do that. Um, so by putting in a bit more time, ignoring for a moment the closest approach, by putting in a little bit more time, I can see, you know, that my encounter velocity is coming down. So let's uh, let's have it let's have it there for a moment. And then, and then I come over to, you know, my prograde and I make adjustments on my prograde that's going the wrong direction. So taking out some prograde, let me take out a bit more. Also watching my closest approach. You can see now my, but now I'm back there. I'm, you know, a couple hundred meters away from the ISS. I've got a 43 on my my initial burn and a 54 on my encounter velocity so so i guess i wasn't being completely fair when i said it took 45 seconds to set up transex it it did that's true but i wasn't taking into account my two different velocities so if i was trying to be as um as specific with transex as i was imfd then i would want to go ahead and spend a bit more time here really trying to dial down that uh you know my my two velocities to make sure I'm getting the cheapest burn that I can possibly get. You know here I'm taking out a bit. I'm t taking out some of that time. You can see my encounter velocity is coming down. It's changing my my closest approach. But then of course if I go back and then every time I go by update I should do an update. But then if I go back to prograde and do uh, so here it looks like I need to take out some prograde and. It's reducing my outward cost. It's, it's re, in in uh, IMFD language. It's reducing my DV and it's reducing my IV. And now it's starting to go up a little bit. But you get the idea. We're not going to use Transex. So I'm not going to fiddle with that any farther. But even so, I still I just think it's I, for this particular um, task. I feel like the Transex method is just way faster. And again, I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying it's faster. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, perform our burn now that we have our plan set up and we spent quite a bit of time going back and forth to make sure it was correct. So our TJ, the time that we're actually going to perform this burn is still a ways out. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. And while we're doing that, I'm going to take a sip. Let's go forward a little faster. And any time you go forward by, you know, thousands of seconds, it's probably a good idea to come out of time warp, maybe around uh, a thousand seconds, so somewhere around this time. And let's just double check everything, you know, similar to how we do in Transex, just to make sure that um, nothing has changed. So we're at a 1x, and we're currently unlocked. So let's uh, let's just do plus minus and just see if anything comes down here. 
So adding in is uh, hurting everything, so that's not what we want to do. So let's go backwards. And going backwards beyond that point is hurting everything, so that's not going to work. And let's just see, what about our time to intercept? Maybe if we change our time to intercept a little bit, we can do better than we currently have done. And that's not helping anything. So changing our time to intercept here is not helping anything. So that's good to see because it tells me, you know, that just gives me the additional confidence that we have already uh, figured this out to the very best of our ability. Okay, so now that we're only a thousand seconds away, let's go ahead and bring up the uh, burn vector. And we go, we're going to press PG to bring up the other page and BV to bring up the burn vector. Now, to uh, be a little bit more fuel efficient, uh, what we can do is we can we can help the autopilot by bringing this plus sign into the center because that's like our target, similar to like in Transex when we go to view target and we have to line that X up in the middle. So if I'm in rotation mode rotation. and I rotate just a bit to the left and I can do this really cheaply by doing control. I just did three taps of control one. So I'm just telling the vessel just to start inching its way over there. And then the one thing I can't ever remember is when the plus is below, do I go down or do I go up? Let me try to go down. Hey, I got it right. And I'm just going to uh, wait a moment for that cr uh, crosshair to get to the line. There it is on the line. And I'm going to kill rotate. Should have done that just a moment sooner. Just fix that. And there we go. And now I'm just going to put in a little bit of yaw in that direction and warp time forward. So we still have 800 seconds to our burn, so we have time, but we want to be careful and we want to make sure that we get all of this done on time. And we're, we're really close now, so I don't want to wait any longer. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in a little bit more rotation just to speed that up, just to get that crosshair right in the middle. And now that we're all lined up, we can do AB for auto burn. And I want to point out, we did not have to line that up. IMFD will do it for us. It's just that if we think ahead, if we think three, four, five hundred seconds ahead and use those little control thrusts to maneuver the vessel, we can save some Delta V. And in space flight, the name of the game is Delta V savings. Now, um, or something else I was going to say on that point, but I can't remember, so it must not have been important. So anyway, we are currently uh, on target to do this burn, and uh, IMFD will take care of it for us, so we we can do time warp now if we want, and we can leave our hands off the, uh, the controls, because it'll carry out the burn on time, it'll stop the burn on time, and when it gets really close to the bottom, you see it takes us back to 1x, it takes us back to real time. And there we are, that's the burn complete. Now I have no idea how close I'm actually going to be to the International Space Station because IMFD doesn't tell me. I just have to take it on faith that it's going to get me uh, really close. If we're just so used to Transex that we can't stand not knowing how close we're going to be, we can bring up Transex and find out because we still have our closest approach since I still have the ISS targeted uh, we still have the closest approach showing in um, t showing to us in Transex, although I think I still have maneuver mode on, so let me actually turn that off. Yeah. So when I turn maneuver mode off, because while maneuver mode's on, that's still a hypothetical, but when I turn maneuver mode off, it gives it to me in real time. So my closest approach, according to Transex, is 62 meters. It's fine. We don't have to do anything. If you're super picky for some reason translation. you can switch translation thrusters and tap your translation thrusters and try to improve that i'm not going to bother i don't feel like it's worth it okay so we're done with this part so let's press bv to get rid of the burn vector now how far away are we from actually uh, rendezvousing with the iss we are 2690 seconds away from the intercept so it'd be a good time to set up our comm nav for this particular scenario uh, that's already done. If I go to comm nav, I have the long range on nav two, the short range, uh, the, the docking port on nav one. Um, not that we, we honestly don't even need that, 
but I like to have it up. And then I'm going to bring up the docking MFD, go to the long range. And at this point, it's already online. I think this comes online when you're a thousand kilometers out from the ISS, something like that. So I just, I just find this useful to have in addition to the time. I also like to know how far away I am. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. And IMFD has one more trick up its sleeve that we'll make use of. And we're actually going to come out of time warp and set it up now. So I'm going to go to menu. And then I'm going to go to orbital. And this uh, orbital program has uh, different capabilities within it. The first one that comes up here is to circularize. We don't need that because we're already in a circular orbit. But if I press this VEM button, it stands for Velocity Match. And then I can press Target, and I can target the ISS. And this Velocity Match program kind of, it, it does the job of what I would normally do by going into Burn Time Calculator. And, you know, I put in the velocity difference between myself and the ISS. And then I press the, uh, I think it's the Burn button in in burn time calculator to eliminate that difference in velocity between myself and the ISS when I arrive. Uh, velocity match will do that for us and, and it's actually better just because we have less work to do. The only thing I don't know is when do I need to begin the burn. Um, there's nothing I can put into the velocity match, at least nothing I know of that I can put into velocity match that will that will have it carry this out automatically and on time. So. I do know that the difference between my XR2 and the ISS is only, you know, 40 something meters a second. Let's look at that again. So let's go menu, um, course. So our intercept velocity is 42.58 or 43 meters a second. I know just intuitively that's not much and we only need a few meters to eliminate that difference. But if we don't know and we want to know for sure, we can go ahead and bring up burn time calculator. We're not going to use it for the burn, but we're just going to use it to tell us how much time we need or how much distance we need. So I'm just going to round up that number to 43, hit enter. So I need 45.2 meters of distance to eliminate that velocity. That's almost nothing. In fact, that's such a low number that if you waited until you were at that point, you would, you would already be running through the solar panels of the ISS. So essentially, any time we're under uh, like a, about a kilometer away from the ISS, we can begin our burn and we'll have plenty of distance still to the ISS. You know, we'll have 900 meters. If we want to get in really low, we could, we could begin our, um, our velocity match when we're just like 500 meters to the International Space Station and then, and then we'll break and we'll still have like 450 meters to go. So let's, uh, let's bring up, in the time we have left, let's bring up uh, the orbital program and we have that velocity match already there uh, actually I went a little bit longer describing this stuff than I thought I would so let me go ahead and pause switch camera views and I'll go ahead and make a third part to this series where we will talk about uh, the velocity match and uh, there's a couple of other things we can look at when we get to the ISS so leave a comment like the video and I'll see you in the next part